leading a cult where critical faculties are suspended, where people are mere instruments of gratification, where discipline is maintained, where criticism is unheard of. This is the wet dream of the narcissist, to be at the center of a group of unreflecting, unthinking, totally obedient people. The cult leader is the perfect example of an extreme narcissistic personality. I did a video some time ago about a cult called the Children of God. In fact, the video is about the cult leader, the founder of that organization, a man called David Burke, who also wished to be known as Moses David to make his name more biblical. Well, from our perspective, the profile of a cult leader seems to fit almost like a hand in a glove, a narcissistic personality disorder. MPDs are drawn to cult leadership primarily because religion is tailor-made for their fantasies. What better manifestation than to be like God? I won't mention every single fact or use every single clip from the Egomania documentary in regard to David Berg, but I will leave in the key part which gives you the essential problem I have with David Berg apologists. For those born into Berg's cult, they had no choice but to follow his idealism. Such as the Jones sisters, who witnessed Berg's extreme narcissism from an early age. It was not that Berg was replacing God, it was that he was the mouthpiece of God and God spoke through him. So obviously we couldn't, we, didn't, we couldn't understand God, we were just, you know, the stupid children. And he was the one that was going to explain God to us. So what he said was God. David Berg often said that he, he was the only one with the wisdom. He was the only one who could interpret biblical prophecy. Many religious cults result in mass suicide. But sometimes they are havens for something just as sinister. Berg created his own Bible in order to spread the idea of promiscuity. He was involved in all kind of sexual deviancy. He glorified just uh, sex on a level that is beyond understanding practically. You know, he didn't sell it to the membership as prostitution. He sold it as flirty fishing. He was the fisher. The women <laughs> were the bait with the hook. And uh, these lonely men, lots of money, were the fish. Berg's idealism began to catch on. As the membership grew, shockingly, Berg removed the age limit for sexual partners. Sex was just a part of life. It was all around you. The adults were walking around naked. They were having sex right there every single night in your room. Your teacher would have sex right there. We'd have classes, live classes, demonstrating how to have sex, teaching us. We'd have date naps where we'd pair off as even as little three, two, three-year-olds and, you know, have mock sex, basically. Except for some of the kids actually were doing it realistically because they'd been taught in a live class. You know, I had to be aware that an adult man was in love with me and I was only six years old. If there was an adult male in the commune that took a fancy to you, you couldn't do much about it, really. In some cases, even if it wasn't forced, if you, if you weren't raped, um, it was still abuse because it was an abuse of power. All the adults, there was no one that you could go to to um, complain if anything did happen. Incredibly, Berg led the children of God for a quarter of a century before his death in 1994. Some will never forget his narcissistic personality. His legacy to our generation is just a lot of pain. I've seen so many hurt individuals. I know a lot of our generation have committed suicide or gotten into yeah. drugs or, you know, they've just it's messed up their lives completely and, and a lot of brave ones who have moved on and made something of their lives and it's very commendable. But to our generation, only harm has come out of David Berg's teachings. Now, the disturbing truth is that when I've discussed this online, when I've shared my video around the internet, when other people have as well, and they've left comments, some of those people have been ignoring and dismissing child sex abuse. And I think the reason why there are apologists for this individual and his organization is because the organization continued after his death. The core of the belief is that David Berg is a prophet, that he founded the organization due to revelation, and therefore those people who belong to that organization 
cannot accept that he might have been far from perfect. <laughs>